Dead Rising has countless changes from 2005 to 2006, and regardless if they are noticeable or not, basically everything has changed at least once throughout the game's development. This is nothing surprising because Dead Rising is a game that took nearly two years to make, and with several setbacks that came along with it. So Dead Rising had plenty of time to upgrade or downgrade lots of things we saw from the trailers. One of the many things that Dead Rising changed throughout the two years is animations. Now this is pretty understandable because if Frank's model was able to change multiple times, you'd expect his animations to change along with it, and it did. I made a video similar to this a few years ago, but it just wasn't accurate enough. But now I'm glad to finally be able to piece together a proper version. So without any further introduction, let's check out all the major animation changes that Dead Rising went through. Now to start things off right, we'll start with Frank's animations, since his are the ones you actually always see. In 2005, we were presented with the E3 trailer of Dead Rising, and despite the entire game looking visually different, the most important thing in this case is how Frank walked or interact with the environment. Luckily, we don't actually have to analyze the trailer footage so much, because almost all of 2005 animations for Dead Rising made it into the final game because most of Frank's animations were just recycled for various survivors. So after just a bit of memory poking, we could set Frank's animations all back to their 2005 versions. Right away, the most noticeable difference is that Frank isn't holding his camera, which in the final game, he is almost always holding his camera. We can see this when in idle, or while walking, or even while running. It's unknown why Capcom designed Frank this way to then change it later in 2006 to make him hold the camera, but I guess Frank holding onto his camera, which contains all the crucial proof of the outbreak, kind of makes sense. He doesn't want to damage it. Now we can't use the final game for this next part of 2005 animations because it doesn't work anymore, but if we hop into the pre-E3 beta, here we can see that Frank was able to shoot his handgun while walking, which is an entire mechanic that was removed, and not just the animation, in the final game Frank just no longer has that ability to walk and shoot. Now you may notice that Frank's camera is on his neck with a strap while using this idle animation. That's actually something not possible in the final game. In the final game, this idle animation of course still exists, I mean even Otis uses it. However, if you put it over Frank, his camera is in his hand. This is because Capcom for some reason changed the idle animation ever so slightly so that the camera is in his hand, rather than on his neck like it used to be. However, in the E3 2006 build of Dead Rising, I found that, although it's fairly close to the final game, the idle animation file is still an early version, so I was able to port it into the final game, and here we have it, the camera neck strap fully restored. So, let's move a bit further in 2005 now, around September. In the TGS build of Dead Rising, this was around the time frame where Capcom decided they wanted Frank's animations to include him holding the camera. So what they actually did was take the majority of the E3 2005 animations and edit one arm so that it's holding the camera. Now there are a few other differences of course, the TGS running animations were fairly different, especially the one where Frank is unarmed. His arm for some reason would fling around. This is because in 2005, Frank's movement speed was very slow, so this animation looked pretty normal. But in the final game, even the slowest walking speed is still much faster than the beta, so his arm kind of looks weird. The only other major difference is when Frank held the shotgun. He would hold the shotgun with both hands, but we'll get into that in a bit later, so let's move on. Now in 2006, with the pre-E3 version 0.50 build, this is where animations started to change a lot from previous 2005 versions, and are now becoming way more similar to the final game, with some exceptions. Mostly all of Frank's movement animations in this build are roughly the same as the final game, however for some reason, weapon animations were still very early and still using 2005 mechanics. Now we already covered this in a few videos, so let's just quickly go over it. In pre-E3 0.50, Frank would still hold the shotgun, the same way he did in TGS, which looks amazing. He also held the handgun and the Uzi the same way he did in TGS. However, when Frank went into idle with the shotgun, or the machine gun, 
His animation was the same one used as E3 2005 without holding the camera. Clearly pre E3 is a mashup of many different builds. Some other weird changes is when Frank is carrying a large object, he would do this weird hopping animation which is not in the final game. Now some more recycled 2005 animations would be shooting guns, such as the handgun. When Frank would shoot the handgun in pre E3, it played the same animation that it did in 2005. Later builds and the final game would eventually change this into the one we know today. The only other build worth mentioning for Frank's animations would be the very next pre E3 build. This build still had a lot of early animations, however some of the more obscure and interesting ones like the shotgun were finalized. Here we can see it's basically the same as the final game. So with Frank out of the way, the only other major difference in animation changes would be the zombies. Oddly enough, in the E3 2005 build of Dead Rising, most of the animations were fairly close to the final game. It's really only when we look at the TGS build of Dead Rising that we see major differences. In TGS, the zombies for some reason were using cutscene animations, and not only that, but they were using the slow versions. It's of course kinda hard to show, since TGS footage is very low quality, but if you watch over a few gameplay videos and look closely, you can see zombies are moving really, really slowly. This was only because they wanted the TGS build to seem very cluttered. They didn't want the zombies to move fast so that they would form a thick barrier, making it hard for the player to get around, allowing the demo to last a bit longer. Now later on in pre E3 2006, the game used the same animations as TGS, however the normal speed versions. Realistically, any screenshot I've ever taken of pre E3 shows the zombies playing fairly different animations from what's in the final game. The most major difference being these few, which actually are all scene and cutscenes, so they aren't really impressive to see so much, but again, these animations never normally play in-game, so that's what makes the beta different. It's just playing animations it normally wouldn't in the final release. And that's about it. Again, despite the many, many changes in Dead Rising, animations are certainly one of them. However, they aren't the most noticeable as, say, textures or Frank in general, but it's great to be able to document animation changes for anyone curious or anyone who wants to restore them into their game. Thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe for more.